this kid is nuts like actual prodigy level the only other player across all contenders region, regions to even be able to stand close to proper level of dominance the back to back to back contenders champion with back to back to back finals mvps and an out of this world tracer and now he's on the chengdu hunters ready to wreak havoc on the apac region after a few unsuccessful bouts in smaller tournaments in 2018 and 2019, including coming in second place in Chinese Open Division, where he stood out and was picked up by Never Lose Weight. However, he would never end up competing with them officially due to a year-long suspension he and his teammates got thrown into for account sharing, which would knock him out of official competition from June 2019 to June 2020. The team would eventually disband and become Flag Gaming, where he remained with and even played with in the NetEase Esports X tournament before his time played up. Here, he made a, main, a name for himself, through, uh, though Flag Gaming would end up going winless in group stages. This was mainly due to his performance against Element Mystic, the winners of the Contenders Continent a month before that, where he really popped off. And he was able to rival Sparkle on the Pharah and Doha on the Reaper, who, as you might have noticed, are, is the current TPS line of the Dallas Fuel, which implies very good things going into the next season. 这一波舞打一把 fell out in a whimper against TPC, and he would rejoin the main roster of Fly Gaming in June 2020 in Contenders. However, the team was very mediocre due to untimely retirement and really weirdness with the roster for several months until Contender Season 2 Week 4 Trials, where they figured out the roster and managed to defeat the formidable Billy Billy Gaming and dominate their way to the finals. Alperta tried his best to hard carry, even getting the win on map 1 due to his god tier tracer, destroying the backline several times, but they end up losing that tournament. In the next tournament, however, is when he starts to re getting crazy. After a tough loss in the playoffs, upper bracket of Chinese contenders season 2 to Team CC, he would have one of the most do dominating performances of any Tracer I've ever seen against Billy Billy Gang. He was completely uncontested, highly aggressive and getting tons of values. He would walk into the enemy team and get minimum 2 or 3 kills seemingly every fight, even if they lose. Pushing C way back every opportunity, only one to two percent. Oh no. Oh, a full one clip by Apritta Pulse Bomb as well. Of course, it connects. The same two go down that ended the previous fight. Apritta is here. He's taken names and nothing else home. And it went down so quickly. That's the point. Though, with Kaylee searching for some sort of sightline, and finally, that's going to be a huge bit of pressure that he got. Yes, Salvation goes down, but Kaylee's open. No, Apritta immediately. 1v2 is the back line. I, I don't know how much bigger of a statement you can make. Churching as well in that segment was keeping such a watchful oh eye on the oh because God, really And even in the finals, uh, in the rematch against CCC, he continued his dominant tracer. He dominated the backline of Farway and uh, Superic, and he managed to diff both Dia and Innovation consistently, and was awarded the finals MVP after the team wound up beating Team CCC in a very, very close match. On to four. It's going to be 1987. Dia also not able to dash around to survive. Finally able to evade some of the damage and get the pick on the C wave. You've got 800 also being removed. Monk attempting with that train, but coming out seconds late. Not going to keep the team alive with the same numbers that you would have wished to have had. The pulse bomb from Aprita attempting to equalize. Can't manage to do so. Four nearing that rally, but going to attempt to fall short. Six seconds now remaining. Team CC with the numbers advantage as Aprita continues to flank around the inner side of this, looking to get the pick onto Dia. Manages to do so. C wave gets another. Super Ritz goes down. 800 with the minefield. Overtime dwindles away. Flag just might do it. It's going to be just seconds They're remaining, gonna it. cleaning it up. It's going to be Team CC brought down from this Titan position that we've put them on for week after week in the grand finals. It At this point, Aprita is indisputably one of, if not the best DPS and Chinese content contenders. His incredible tracer play has carried Fly Gaming against the most dominant uh, contenders team in Overwatch history and one of the best teams across regions. But there were a few questions about his flexibility. At this point in Contenders, he hasn't played that much other than the Tracer. While he did pop off in the Reaper and Farter against the NetEase X Gaming tournament, it didn't stop people from wanting him to see, wanting him to flex onto other heroes more. He was eventually transferred to Team Chaser after the Contenders Gauntlet, after Flag Gaming left the Gauntlet without a single win and disbanded. 
Aperta began to work on its other heroes, and despite the team not performing well in the first few stages, he was considered a hard carry by most, with the team revolving around him very much. He would eventually have yet another underdog run against Billy Billy Gaming, where, after getting knocked into the loser's bracket by them, they would meet them again in the championship where Aperta popped the fuck off, not just on the Tracer, but also on Cassidy, Ash, and Reaper. Inside of this castle. I mean, Billy Billy Gaming there, they clump up, and against the Sombra, that is the worst case scenario in a composition like this. And team They managed to beat this dominant Billy Billy Gaming after playing 11 maps of tournament Overwatch in one day. And he won the MVP yet again. They more or less repeated this the next season. They had a rough start and didn't win any stages, but had a massive underdog buff heading into the championships where they played one of the greatest contenders matches of all time against Billy Billy Gaming, with Chaser and Aprita narrowly taking the win. 99% into the overtime, Hyunjae taking down the support counterpart, Keo eliminated, Langsa the only one remaining to try and keep this team alive, it's going to be a real challenge, but uh... a pickup comes in by Aprita on drifting over top from Liga with those picks, getting the baby diva down, and now Aprita hit by the nano, he's nano the pick up onto Hyunjae, you've eliminated the utility Ooh. and the mobility as Aprita demonstrates how they can have a pop-off moment as well, just .07 meters to go, and this one is even more interesting because Kaneki played Tracer most of the match. While Aprita, while not being on his our hero, managed to diff the enemy DPS line, especially Pineapple, on pretty much every hitscan there is. He would wind up taking the championship in the finals MVP for the third time in the row, cementing himself as probably the best player in Chinese contenders history outside of Leaf. This guy is nuts. Winning three championships on a row on two different teams and winning MVP in every single final is unheard of. This guy can produce some of the biggest hard carry performances ever. Genuinely proper level carry. Though I'd probably say proper is still the better player. While his best hero is by far the Tracer, which is probably top tier even by Owl standards, the man can pop off on pretty much any hit scan as well. This could be a top take, but I could see Brita becoming the main Tracer player for the Hunters despite having Leave on the team with the Predator playing Tracer and Leaf playing everything else. I do not think there would be a drop in their performance whatsoever. I feel like with practice and with a good and with good coaching, our Predator could become comparable to Leaf on the Tracer. Though he'd probably be summed out for Jinmu, uh, with Leaf on Tracer should the meta call for it. It is definitely prodigy level. And it's all honestly probably the only Chinese player who can keep up with Leaf on most heroes, including Jinmu and Dia. Worth noting is that he gets a huge playoff buff when in underdog situations, with his team consistently ending losing streaks of Chinese juggernauts when it matters the most. All I'm saying is, if Shengdu level up in a tournament and upset the dragons in a banger of a match to take the to take a tournament, it'll just be business as usual for Prita. Thanks for watching, and remember to hit like and subscribe for more. I upload nearly daily Overwatch League content, and I'm trying to hit 1,000 subs by the end of Season 5, so any subscription helps greatly. Thanks.